we never grow familiar with the, the house of God. It is the gate of heaven. And you know, there were about nine months in which in peculiar circumstances, I wasn't able to go to church in the traditional way in which I'd led my family and had been led by my family through the entirety of my life. And nothing grieved me more than not being able to stand alongside my children in worship. Consider it a privilege on any given Sunday when you can come individually or with your family to the house of God. Now I enter with increased gratitude. This is the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. And Lord, I thank you for your presence and your voice. And Holy Spirit, I thank you. You are the great interpreter and you're moving amongst, speaking uniquely and specifically, edifying hearts, reorientating hearts in this atmosphere this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Pastor Dylan and Tess, one of the reasons I trust you so much uh, is the integrity of your heart. And Pastor Tess gave me a tour of the venue when we landed. And we went up to the offices and when I crossed the threshold to Pastor Dylan's office, I felt an atmosphere which I would describe as the atmosphere of a king's chamber. And I love the scripture that says, uh, the heart of the king in the hand of God is like the river which runs through it and he directs and ordains the steps and the course. And Pastor Dylan and Tess are royal, regal, upright, humble hearts in the hand of God. And they're so yielded. And that's why I trust them. This is what I witness upon your leaders. They are significant. Their leadership is a signature leadership. It is the signature and the distinction of heaven. It is the signature of new day expression. And they have an apostolic grace and it's unique and it's for now in this nation and now in the earth. Can we please honour your leaders? Count it a great privilege to be sitting under them. And you know, in our friendship, they're really even in my coming, like Pastor Dylan said, I have activated things in and over this house. This house and the atmosphere of this house has activated things also in me. It's very much a transactional reality. And you know, I felt like my mantle has been straightened and that's so significant in this time in my life. And so I wanna thank you leaders and thank you. Uh, I wanna throw up a photo of my family. Uh, my husband is the greatest gift. His name is Hartley and he is a man of heart and great integrity. Uh, and he's God's great gift to me. And that's my daughter, Sienna. She's, <laughs> she's uh, Mackenzie's doppelganger. She also sings musical theatre, and she's also a striking beauty, as you are. And she also carries a worship anointing, as you do. And Lord, I just pray that the worship anointing would be the strongest grace that runs through Mackenzie. I thank you for the training and I thank you for the heart towards musical theatre. But Lord, I actually pray that the anointing of worship would surpass and supersede. And even Mackenzie, when you occupy platforms and God is gonna open doors and you're gonna occupy stages, uh, I, I believe the anointing is even gonna move in those places because I believe it's gonna be greater than the training and greater than the orientation. The influence in the culture of musical theater training is very strong. You know, when people are trained, there's a particular mannerism and all of that, but I really believe the anointing, and I, at times I believe the anointing is gonna move hearts to win new favor because it's gonna be an X factor which the world can't even articulate or explain. God bless you in the days ahead. You have the brightest, brightest future. And I'm so confident for you. I also have a son, Jesse, he's almost 15. He's a gentleman and he's my great comfort. He's sensitive to me. And a little girl, Cleo, Peace is her middle name. And um, she's creative and a feeler and um, brings me a lot of joy. She's my little companion. 
So um, in the last service, I preached a message and you can get it online. That's great. That was that moment. Um, and, I, and I pivoted towards a message that I felt aligned with what I was hearing from your senior leaders. But then in the gap, I felt to dovetail in another direction. So we're going to do that. And I blame that on you, Jaden, is it? Haha, <laughs> in the best sense. And this is your dad? It's your friend. Okay, all right. Are you like a spiritual father to him? I felt that. So I, I sensed fathership, um, even though perhaps there's another man that's your <laughs> biological father, but I, I sense that you've stood on the mountains and the ravines with this young man and you've believed for him. Would that be true? In believing for his future. Anyway, you, you to me today are a picture of um, the spirit of adoption which is over this house a spiritual son coming in under the umbrella. And I, want to, I feel to minister to family today, and you're kind of a picture of that. Because in the, in the family of God, whether or not it's biological, there's a lot of spiritual covering which God provides. Amen? And, uh, and I want to encourage the mothers in the house also. Um, Proverbs 31 says... She will laugh at the days to come. This is how it describes Proverbs 31, woman. And the reality is that a mother can only laugh at the days to come if her children are laughing. It's when her children are well that she can laugh. It's when there's provision over her household that she can laugh. That's actually what provokes a mother to laugh at the days to come. The Amplified Version says it like this, and she smiles at the future, knowing that she and her family are prepared. And I just wanna declare that over the heart of every mother, both spiritual and natural, and she smiles at the future, knowing that she and her family are prepared. In Jesus' mighty name, and I just wanna acknowledge the signature of high value around family, which is part of the interwoven story of this house. And I welcome you today as family, and I approach you as family, if that's okay. Let's just jump in here this morning. So I wanna bring a message, and it's titled, He Trains My Hands for War, My Fingers for Battle. And that's a scripture, Psalm 144, one. Praise be to the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. And I learned a song as a child. Blessed be the Lord my God, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. Does anybody know that song? It's very much an Australian song from the 80s. So look, I was a child and my dad was leading worship in the 80s. So salmon colored dinner jacket, big sideburns, is that what you call them here? Amazing situation. And look, as he sung that song over my little heart, I perhaps didn't need the magnitude or the gravity or the power of that scripture then, but it was sown into my heart and it remained with me until a day in such I should need it. And this is the power of scripture and this is the reality of scripture. It's dynamic and it comes alive in due season. Psalm 1834 says, he trains my hands for war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. Uh, the amplified version of verse 33 says, he makes my feet like hind's feet, able to stand firmly and tread safely on paths of testing and trouble. He sets me securely upon my high places. We ascend and occupy the high places because we are trained and conditioned. We advance in life, be it in the business sphere, professionally, through academia, in our finances, because we are trained and conditioned to ascend and occupy the high places. And I just wanna declare advancement over some people in the room today. If you feel like there's a ceiling over your advancement, be it academic, uh, financial, or relational, can I just ask you to pop a hand on your your heart, right, where you're seated. I just thank you, Lord, for release, release, release. I thank you, Lord, that you're the God that shakes and shifts and breaks ceilings. And so, Lord, whatever that bottleneck is, I just declare right now a release and an advancement. I thank you, Lord, you call us from strength to strength, from glory to glory, and I just declare glory to glory over the ones that are facing a ceiling in their circumstance. You are the great I am. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I thank you, 
Lord, for a breakthrough that comes from the inside out. I thank you, Lord, a stirring on the inside of us. And I just address unbelief. I diminish your voice in Jesus' mighty name. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So the Lord does allow us to be tempered by hardship to condition our resolve. Who knows this to be true? He allows us to be tempered by hardship to condition our resolve. Do you know the Lord needs the bride of Christ to be resolute and steadfast like a stake in the ground, not like a reed blowing in the wind according to every ideology and pressure that comes. He is bringing internal fortitude and clarity to the saints in this time. And I felt like we have been led from the war room to the throne room and back again for conditioning. And let me just unpackage what that looks like and what that means. So war room preparation is strategy and focus. I see a group gathered around a table focusing on the blueprint. It's collaborative. It's cultivating humility. It's sharing insight and coming into agreement. And I feel like um, quietly the Lord has been working on the spirit of agreement in the depths of this house and aligning hearts, lots of little tweaks lots of little adjustments to bring hearts into alignment so that the flow can be strong and uninterrupted coming through this house. And then it's about going out to address and disarm the enemy's schemes according to what the Lord reveals in that war room round table. And there is pressure and there's weight and it's forming and it's forging and it's fashioning like the iron rod in the fire being beaten by the blacksmith. I don't know about you, but I felt like at times I've been like an iron rod being beaten by the, <laughs> the blacksmith as God is producing something of, fortif- he's fortifying something in me. Are there any other mature? your saints in the room that know what it's like to be under the hand of God as he raises us up. So the Lord is conditioning our resolve so we won't bend when we're not meant to bend, so we won't bow when we're not meant to bow. So the conditioning of the war room grifts, grafts the grit for the grace for the throne room. So the throne room is holy, it's holy ground. It's entirely Jesus-focused. And I love this house because there's such a high value of King Jesus at the center, magnifying one name, King Jesus. He is the great I am, and we are eclipsed. This is the nature of the throne room. And courts as a song just articulates the throne room so beautifully. Have you heard it yet? Is it out there? You're tuning in, it's so good. So we are nothing in his presence. We bow low. Friends, we've got to get comfortable bowing low in the presence of God. Let your knees flex again. When do we stop getting on our knees? Reverence before the Lord. That's the nature of the throne room. We are only permitted to enter and exist because he qualifies us, because he's marked us. The hem of his robe fills the temple and every atom of the throne room is occupied by the Lord. I've heard it said, I might be hanging by a thread, but it's attached to the hem of his robe. (laughs) So I'm not worried. Maybe you're in here today and you feel like you're attached to a thread, hanging on. Do you know there's, there's nowhere safer? Keep coming to the house of God. Come what may. Come whether you're on a mountain or you're in a ravine. Come to the house of God. There's such a spirit of embrace in this sanctuary. It's such a beautiful place. So what's permitted in the war room is not permitted in the throne room. Here's an example from Mordecai in Esther 4, 2 to 3. It says he came only as far as the king's gate. He came to a threshold for no one was dressed in sackcloth. No one dressed in sackcloth was allowed to enter the king's gate. It reads on verse four to five, the, king, the queen was stunned. She sent fresh clothes to Mordecai so he could take off his sackcloth, but he wouldn't accept them. Mordecai contended in the outer court, in the war room, in sackcloth and ash. He contended for Esther, he contended for his people. 
but it wasn't permitted in the king's chamber, in the throne room. War room garments don't qualify for king's chambers. The Lord is preparing the bride for his chambers. He's refining us. Any praying mums out there this morning, I honour you and I salute you. You're absolute game changers. You're absolute God forces on the earth. Um, <clears throat> and I have a praying mum <clears throat> and I honour and acknowledge her. Do you know my mum has held me through this, uh, we've been through a season, an interesting fiery season and my mum has held me um, so remarkably through this time and I just, I honour my mum. And she's a praying mum and she had a vision and she saw me kneeling and garments, the Lord was laying garments over my shoulders and he laid, you know, the golden glory layer and, and green, like a picture of like prosperity and fertility and a purple garment, that royal lineage that we carry as sons and daughters. But you know, the foundational garment was sackcloth and ash. And the reality is, if you're going to walk in the anointing, if you're going to partner with the great I am, there is a, I would say, uh, that foundational garment is ultimately humility. It's sackcloth and ash. The foundation of miracles is humility. You know, underneath all those beautiful garments was sackcloth and ash. Uh, the foundation of a life in Christ is surrender and a life on the altar. It's an upside down kingdom, isn't it? And you know, it signifies repentance and loss and humility and coming from the dust and returning to the dust. It's about laying down our will and taking up Christ. And I feel like the Lord has really got his fatherly hand on us and he's like, will you represent my will? Will you deny your will for a moment? We live in a world which loves to gratify self and we've got influences and it's amazing self-promotion, but it's an upside down kingdom. And the Lord is curating the ability to um, bend our will and submit to his. Amen. And ultimately, we lay down our will and we take up Christ. We, so we adhere to the instincts of the Son of God in us. He's putting the instincts of the Son of God in us as we partner with him. The arm of the Spirit overriding the arm of the flesh. The arm of the flesh can steer a degree off course, but the arm of the Spirit hits the bullseye. And maybe you've made some decisions that feel like you've steered a degree off course because your human nature has got the front seat in those decisions. But when we submit our heavy, weighty decisions unto the Lord and we allow the Spirit of God to bring forth wisdom and revelation, they'll hit the bullseye. And if you feel like there's some parts of your life you'd like to hit the bullseye financially and with your family, let me tell you, come in humility, enter into fasting, bring them before the Lord, let the Spirit of God speak. And I declare you'll hit the bullseye where perhaps you've got a dart full of darts that are like, you know, on those outer rings, which are not very satisfying, but you wanna be somebody who hits the bullseye, right? We've only got one life. We've only got this brief moment and we're called to hit the bullseye. I, Jaden, amen? That's what it's about. The bride is called to rise as a sharp shooter, not blown by the wind, but people of clarity and conviction and character. I'm causing, calling us all up into our greater selves here this morning, amen? Beautiful. Um, anybody a soccer fan in the room? Have I got some soccer players in the room? Can I get an amen from the seats? Are you quite a gifted soccer player? I feel like you are, my friend. So good. I feel like you're born for soccer. Are you quite natural? I feel like you're nimble on your feet. <laughs> so where are all those soccer fans' hands? There's a number of you out there. So good. I love it. Anybody watch the David Beckham series on Netflix? How good. Can I just say I really recommend it even if you're not into soccer because he's actually a beautiful personality. He actually, he reminds me of Pastor Dylan. <laughs> like he's a person of um, discipline and humility and he, he actually stewards his life beautifully as far as I can tell via Netflix. <laughs> he's amazing. Um, and the thing about David is he, his dad trained him from a very little boy in soccer quite hard. His dad was actually quite hard on him. 
Uh, and as a young adult, David lost favour with the UK crowd and he actually had to endure a lot of slander and resentment from the people um, whilst he was starting to rise as a young soccer um, player, you know, in the papers and from the stands. But the remarkable thing is he didn't react. He would say because of his dad's conditioning in his youth, God is actually getting us into this place of high intent and honing in. So it doesn't matter what comes at us, we're going to be quite fixated on what heaven has for us. He's actually, he's drawing us into his quickening and his high intent. That's what the Lord's doing. He's inviting us in out of a slumber, out of the shallows. He's inviting us in to a place of high intent, high density living with Jesus. So um, one of David's middle names is actually Joseph. And we, I love this as a scriptural name and personality. And he actually gave that name to his firstborn son, Brooklyn. Do you guys know all these things about David Beckham? Are you learning about David Beckham here in church this morning? How good. All right, let me give you the family background. So um, Genesis 49, 22 to 24 tells us about Joseph is a fruitful bow, a fruitful bow by a well, whose branches run over the wall. We're gonna be conditioned to reach past certain obstacles. Let me tell you, if things come in the way of your path, God is gonna give you strategy and nous. He's gonna give you some grit to reach over the obstacle call. Just because the obstacle presents doesn't mean you have to bow to it, back down from it. And you know, God didn't break open the wall. It says that Joseph was able to reach over the wall. Hello, God is gonna create dimension, creative strategy. You know, he's gonna bring people around to give you a leg up over the wall. I don't feel like you have to bow or back down. I just declare creative strategies, financial strategies over your future. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. It goes on in verse 23. The skilled archers have bitterly attacked and provoked him. They have shot at him and harassed him, verse 24, but his bow remains firm and steady in the strength that does not fail, for his arms were made strong and agile by the hands of the mighty one of Jacob, by the name of the shepherd, the stone of Israel. He trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. He trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. You should start walking around your house thinking about grow a centimeter or two taller. He trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. He trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. So David Beckham had to play soccer whilst receiving death threats to his newborn son. Can you imagine? How vulnerable, he's on the other side of the world, his family's vulnerable, but because of his father's conditioning, he did not flinch. He would say actually he, he fought back by scoring goals. He actually took the slander and the opposition and the stress and the grief and the pressure and he channeled it into his ultimate victory. He fought back. He would say it's in moments like corners at the end of the game that you can create history. Create some history. The Father conditions us to prepare us for the future so we hold ground. When opposition comes, the enemy is trying to get us to let go of the future. Oh, he's had a red hot shot at that with you, my friend. He wanted, to, he wanted you to let go of the future. He wanted to shake it out of your hand. However, send your roots down and send your praise up. Even if you've got to bend like a tree in a hurricane, send your roots down, bend with the pressure, but don't let go of your future. In the high winds, the beauty of the high winds is the old falls away. All that can't remain blows away. The future, however, holds fast. Because wind can't reach seeds. Buried, awaiting the day to erupt through the soil. You know what? When I walk through a fire and I walk through a few, I walk out freer. 
Bring on your conditioning, Lord. Bring, I welcome your conditioning, Lord. I know it's to my benefit. I know it's going to hone some resolve on the inside of me. Blessed be the Lord my God, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. Blessed be the Lord my God, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. Let me teach you a song from the 80s in Australia. Blessed be the Lord my God, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. Isaiah 41.10 says, do not fear anything. For I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Be assured, I will help you. I will certainly take hold of you with my righteous right hand, a hand of justice, of power, of victory, and of salvation. Queen Esther also prepared to hold ground. When it was Esther's turn to go to the king, she asked for nothing other than what Haggai, the king's eunuch in charge, had recommended. Can I say it's a less is more kind of time. All we need is the word of God and the spirit of God. I don't know that we need all the podcasts. They're great. Or the, all the books. Oh, dear. I'm just saying they're, they're, an, they're a beautiful gift. I'm just saying some people go to them first. Okay, I've just been through such a gnarly season. If I didn't have the spirit of God and the word of God, I don't know if I would have made it. And now I'm gonna read Tess's back book on the way back and it's gonna deeply edify my spirit and I receive it as a gift. <laughs> Quick recovery there. But you know what I mean. Sometimes we default to our friendship circle when we really just need to be in our prayer space. It's just not enough. Queen Esther understood how to travel light. I'm just saying we need to travel light in these times. She submitted to the voice of her uncle, just like David submitted to the voice of his father. And it navigated them through really trump complex times. And David Beckham, he was still hearing his dad you hear this in the Netflix series, still hearing his voice in his head as he rose and rose and rose to fame. The instructions remained in his heart and they held him. I'm gonna ask the worship team to come. Zechariah 9.13 says, for I have bent Judah as my bow. I have made Ephraim its arrow. I will stir up your sons, O Zion, against your sons, O Greece, and wield you like a warrior's sword. The Lord is tempering us in his hand. I'm gonna ask us to stand right across this room. Lord, we just thank you. You are such a good father. You see us, you see the course and the intentionality of our lives. From our mother's womb, you weave us together with such intentionality. And Lord, I just pray in this moment that we would line up with the blueprint of heaven, which is written over our days and our steps. I'm just gonna ask you to close your eyes across the room and bow your head. And I wanna ask you, if you feel like the steps of your path are just maybe a degree off course, perhaps not entirely reflecting the Father's intent for you, can I just ask you to lift your hand right where you are? I see you all. And I just wanna say God is the ultimate redeemer and he reorientates us and it is human nature to drift. Sometimes he sends a wind so that we drift back towards him even when it feels oppositional. And Lord, I just thank you that you see each hand and I just see the Lord taking a hold of your forearm like in a rescue mission when you're flailing in the waters, people grab the, the forearm and pull you out. This is the picture I have. And I just see the Lord taking a hold of those hands and those forearms that are raised. 
And I just see a reconnection first and foremost to the Father to strengthen you. Just first and foremost, He just wants you to know that He's there. Right in that that degree off course, right in that little place of floundering, I just see the Father first and foremost uh, reassuring you that He's present. God never lifts His hand from us. Sometimes we feel like He does. He's always there. Sometimes our choices silence Him. I just see God really drawing His sons and daughters in. I just feel the embrace of the Father. Big arms coming around, drawing you into the chest of the Father. So I just release deep reassurance to those ones with their hand raised right now, settling hearts. And I wanna ask in this atmosphere right now, still with eyes closed and looking inward, do you feel that you're adrift from God? Do you feel that you've perhaps known Jesus, but there's been a drift? I wanna ask every, particularly the sons in this room right now, just to check your heart. See, the nature of walking with Jesus Christ and knowing Him as Lord and Saviour is that we know to uh, permit Him to be Lord as much as Saviour. And I feel like there's some people that have perhaps committed to Jesus before, but they've been orientating in their own way. And I feel like the Lord wants to be reinstated as Lord and Saviour. If you've um, prayed a prayer, in in which you've received Jesus, but you've drifted, I wanna pray with you today. If you've never prayed a prayer acknowledging Jesus, and this is your threshold moment, I wanna pray with you today. If you're unsure and you're doubting your connection to Jesus and you wanna make your peace with Him in this place today, then I wanna pray with you. So I'm asking all of those across the room that need to respond to Jesus and take a hold of Him today, just to lift your hand right where you're standing, right across the room. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for children just reorientating back to you in this moment. I thank you for a multitude of soft hearts in this place. I thank you for the sons. I contend for the sons in this place right now. I thank you, Lord, you're calling sons back into full alignment. I declare full alignment, undeterred alignment across these hearts in Jesus' mighty name. Would you repeat this prayer after me just to consolidate this significant decision in your hearts right now? We're gonna pray together. Jesus. Jesus, thank you for receiving me into relationship. Wash me clean with anything and everything that's caused separation. Separation. Today, Today, I give you my life. I I choose choose to follow you you. in the name of your Son. son. 